Okay, I've been dodging this subject for long enough. Electricity theory, it's got to be done. There aren't any electricians in the audience, are there? Good. <laughs> Basically, it's a new tube, though. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, electricity, um, voltage, in quite often in describing electricity, you can describe it in plumbing terms, right? And in plumbing terms, voltage is the pressure that's in the fluid system. And the current is the current, is the flow rate of the electricity or the flow rate of the water. And what you have, so if you wanted to look at voltage, you'd say that a high voltage would be similar to having a high head height in a water system. So if you had a high water tank and you had high pressure, that would equate to being high voltage. And you could get, if this water was spinning, spinning a wheel, you could get the same amount of work done by a small volume of water, a small current of water from a high head as you could from a large volume of water at a low head. Okay? So the high head is the equivalent of high voltage, the low head is the equivalent to low voltage, the high current is high amps, and the low current is low amps. And the work done measured in watts is the volts multiplied by the current in amps. So volts multiplied by amps is watts. And that's what, so one, one kilowatt could be a thousand volts at one amp, or it could be one volt at a thousand amps, or anything in between. Usually it's 240 volts at four amps, okay? If you have very narrow pipes, for example, there'd be a friction loss in the flow of the water. Well, similarly, if you have very light copper wire, for example, you would get a voltage drop across the circuit, okay? So, the thickness of the pipe could be similar to the resistance of your cable or your wire. And again, we're still looking at the height or the pressure being similar to the voltage. So, if you had a, a flow of water running through a pipe, at the early stages of that pipe, the pressure would be higher than further down the pipe and that would be a pressure drop along the pipe. Similarly, along the cable, you would get a voltage drop. Okay. So there's a voltage drop as the electricity travels along a wire, and that voltage drop increases with either the current or with the um, resistance. The, the faster the flow through the pipe, similarly, the pressure would drop. So the voltage drop is the current in amps multiplied by the resistance in ohms. If there was only a dripping tap running through that circuit, you'd have a very small voltage drop. Once the current really got up, that's when the voltage drop would increase. Okay. Now, if we put in a wind turbine and we have, say, a battery system, and we have a choice between, say, 24 volts and 48 volts, okay? For the amount of work done, you're looking at the voltage multiplied by the current, okay? So a low voltage system would require twice the current of the higher voltage system. Now that's one of the reasons why we actually travel, we carry electricity along pylons, sometimes at 400,000 volts in the States, at even higher levels than that. But on top of that, if you lost, say, one volt out of 48 volts, you'd be losing roughly 2% of your current, of your power, right? If you lost one volt out of 24 volts, you'd be losing 4% of your power. Okay, so the greater the voltage drop and the lower the voltage, the greater the loss is, okay? So cable sizes in low voltage systems have to be a lot larger than they are in conventional 240 volt systems. So for example, when we put our 24 volt turbine in the field, we had to put it within 70 meters of the house. Okay, so if you're choosing a <coughs> voltage, if you took an example of 200 volts, a 100 watt light bulb would be 0.416 amps, at 24 volts would be 4.16 amps, and at 12 volts would be 8.32 amps, okay? But the voltage drop will be the current multiplied by the resistance, so you get a higher voltage drop. Basically, if you have the voltage that you're working at, for the same amount of work done, you need to multiply your cable size by 4, okay? So if you want the same loss in a, two, in a 24 volt cable that you get in a 240 volt cable, if you wanted the same power loss, you'd have to go to 100 times the size of cable. Okay. Now, in fact, what that meant for us 
was that the cable coming from our wind turbine down to the house had to be a 75 millimeter cable, okay? So the 17, mil 17 meters of cable that we have coming from our turbine down to the house is a cable of that size, and there's 70 meters of it. And back when we did that, that was 850 euros worth of cable, and I'd bet think what it would cost today, okay? That's the rent. I'd like to get you airport security with that, huh? Yeah, yeah, no, it's a serious chunk of cable. Okay. And how much do you reckon per meter it is to install, or roughly to install the cable that you put up in the, because that's a good further distance up, so. Yeah, so the, the 240 volt turbine that we're putting in now, which is grid tied, is 350 meters from the house. I'll come on to this under cable sizing, okay. right? But it's, um, it, we can get away with a six millimeter cable, right? Mm. Which is, um, you know, just tiny compared to this. Okay, now there are two types of electricity working their way through the systems, right? And um, one of them is direct current. And in direct current, your positive is always positive and your negative is always negative, right? And that kind of electricity, it can be stored in batteries and it's the only type of electricity that you can actually store in batteries, okay? And then the electricity that normally powers your house and that comes off any uh, turbine is alternating current. And in alternating current, both sides of the circuit alternate between positive and negative. Okay? So the positive starts out being positive and the negative starts out being negative and they swap it over. And in Europe, they do that 50 times a second. It's a 50 hertz supply. In America, they use 60 times per second. They use a 60 hertz supply. But that's what alternating current generally is. And it's known as a sine wave. So the, the current in each wire goes from positive to negative and back again 50 times a second. The, re, the only difference, and the, while this one is going up to positive, your other cable is going down to negative and going back up to positive. And the only reason we refer to one of them as positive and one of them negative is that, generally speaking, in household electricity supplies, one of them is grounded to earth and it's considered to be the negative. But it is all the time technically hovering between positive and negative. Okay, and it does that 50 times a second so fast that you, you don't notice. And the reason why this electricity is generated this way generally is because you've got, the reason why it's got this shape is because it's coming off a generator which is shaped like a wheel and as the wheel returns, returns it follows the, the, the potential difference, in other words, the, the, the flux between the magnet and the coils is going up and down in this curved pattern following effectively the shape of the wheel. Now, generally speaking, in any generator, you're looking at a three-phase system where there are three wires effectively coming off the generator, and the three of them are jumping from positive to negative um, at, a, at a cycle, and this is known as three-phase. So you've got three phases all alternating between positive and negative. And the, quite often, the voltage between one phase and the other phase is uh, in a 240-volt system is 400 and something volts. Okay.